Hey everybody, Tex-Mex here. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today we're going to take a look at the Ruger Single 6 Convertible. This is one I recently got my hands on. It's one I've been looking for for a long time because I actually had an older Single 6 Convertible that I purchased. God, this thing I probably bought almost 30 years ago now. <laughs> That's almost that old. Um, and this is a six and a half inch barrel. It's also a convertible. I've got the 22 Magnum cylinder in there right now. Uh, this has been a trusty pistol that's been by my side for a, for a long, long time for hunting trips, uh, fishing trips, or just hiking. And, and, I, and I liked it quite a bit. I still do. But I'd been looking for a stainless one. And not only that, I'd been looking for a shorter one. And they have this one that's a 4.62 barrel inch version. They are a little harder to find. I believe they make them stainless steel and in blue. So when I found this one, I jumped all over it and decided to get it. As you can see, it has these beautiful wood grips, uh, the adjustable rear sight, uh, ramp front sight, which is standard in a lot of the single sixes. Now they make single sixes with just the integral uh, notch and front blade, like, you know, your more traditional Vaqueros, but those tend to be uh, limited run exclusives. And those are really pretty as well. But one of the things I like about the single sixes are the adjustable sights. I know that kind of changes the look, uh, but it does help, especially considering how finicky 22 long rifle and 22 Magnum can be. So at some point, I'm going to do some other videos. I'm going to end up comparing it uh, to this guy, and I'm going to probably compare it uh, shooting 22 Magnum and 22 long rifle out of it. Uh, and, you know, at a couple of distances just to see if there's any real difference between the six and a half and the uh, four and a half inch barrel. And I also have a Ruger single nine to compare it to. And this is a six and a half inch barreled version that's just in 22 Magnum, but it has nine rounds instead of six. This one may have a smaller advantage because it has the uh, true glow uh, front and rear sides that really help a lot. It makes it a little bit more uh, accurate to hit. But the reason I wanted this shorter one here is because it's going to be easier to carry in a holster, easier to throw on my belt when I'm walking around. Those six and a half inch revolvers, although not uncomfortable when you have them on the belt, can start just being a little bit long, especially if you're jumping in and out of a truck or an ATV. However, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go to the range and try out some of these ammunitions. I just kind of want to see if this one has a preference. I haven't had this pistol very long, and as I do with my blued version, I am going to primarily carry it with the 22 Magnum cylinder. So here I have some Norma, a 40 grain Winchester Super X 40 grain. This is one I've used many times in many different uh, 22 Magnums. Some uh, Maxi Mag 40 grains, some Maxi Mag uh, HP Plus V, and these are 30 grain, so a lighter. Uh, let's see here. The Remington is also 40 grain, and we got some other Winchesters down here. Some Varmint. Uh, these are some high velocity. And they're also 30 grain. So we'll see if it has a preference for either 30 grain or 40 grain 22 Magnum loadings. I'm not going to bother with 22 long rifle this time. When I do one of the comparisons with the other single sixes, I'm sure I'll, I'll go ahead and test it, at least with my blued one, because the single nine only shoots 22 Magnum. But for now, let's just take this sucker to the range real quick and see how it does with these different ammunitions. And here we are. I set this up. We're just over 10 yards, about 10 and a half yards, closer to 11. I've got the 22 Magnum cylinder in the single six here. I've warmed it up with a few rounds and now I'm gonna try these different ammos to see which one it likes the most. I'm gonna sight this in probably for 25 yards, but just right now, since I'm not sure where I'm hitting, I wanna start off a little bit closer. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it's probably far enough to where if there's a significant difference between these ammunitions, we'll be able to see. So we're gonna start off first with the 40 grain uh, Winchester Super X. Seems like it's low and to the left. Okay, quite low and to the left. Luckily it's adjustable sight, so if I decide this is the one I'm gonna go with, <laughs> it won't be a problem to adjust it. But first we wanna see which one it likes the most. I guess we'll stick with 40 grains and uh, we'll move on to the Remington. I've had good luck with the Remington out of some of my firearms. Let's see how it does out of this one. Okay, the Remington. Also low and to the left. 
Ooh, way low into the left. Didn't even hit the target. A little closer there. Grouping a little better now. And it seems to be grouping about the same, except for that one that really went low into the left. But since the post, these two have hit low into the left, I'm going to adjust my sights just a little bit uh, before I shoot the next round, just to uh, see if I can get the point of aim, or excuse me, point of impact a little bit higher and to the right. Next up, let's see here. This is the MaxiMag CCI 22 hollow point. It's also a 40 grain jacketed hollow point. Let's see. Hopefully I adjusted my sights the correct way. If not, <laughs> we're about to find out. Oh yeah, yeah, seems like I got him right. Well, I'm hitting closer to my point of aim, uh, but this one didn't group very well. I mean, compared to the other two, it seems not to have grouped as well. Uh, let's see here. I think I'll move away from a 40 grain now. I'm going to give this uh, pistol a little bit of time to cool off because um, the barrel is starting to warm up. And uh, then we'll try... Let's try one of the 30 grains. We'll try this uh, CCI HP plus V, jacketed hollow point plus V, which I mean, I assume means velocity because this 30 grains is at 2,200 feet per second. Okay, the barrel's nice and cool now. Let's see how it likes these hyper velocity 30 grains. Okay, yeah, for a second I didn't think it hit paper, but it's there, it's low. It looks like I was making a smiley face on the bottom. <laughs> Uh, didn't group them terribly. Uh, I'll have to compare them here at the end to see how they did compare to each other. But uh, didn't do as bad as I thought it was with 30 grain. So why don't we stay with a 30 grain for now and try our other 30 grain, which is going to be this uh, Winchester Varmint and Small Game. It's Polymer Tip VMAX 30 grain. Here we go, Winchester 30 grain. Seems to be repeating the same pattern. Ooh, way low to the right. Huh. Well, it actually seemed to like that one. Uh, it hit low, and there's one that seemed to kind of be a flyer to the right and low and to the right, but the rest hit pretty well. So, I don't know. It may like these lighter polymer tip rounds. But let's go ahead and get our last one loaded up, and that's going to be here the Norma 22 Jacketed Hollow Point 40 Grain. And here we go. There we go. Also seem to group them relatively well. Well, let's go get our target and see how these guys compare to each other. Well, and that was a lot of fun. Really like this uh, 
single six with the short barrel. I mean, it's such a pretty pistol. The, the rosewood grips, stainless steel, it's just gorgeous. I know a lot of people don't like the adjustable sights on single actions, and I will admit that uh, the standard non-adjustable sights on a single action revolver does have a good classic look, but sometimes it's nice to have adjustable sights when you're actually trying to be able to hit point of aim and not having to use some sort of Kentucky windage when figuring out where to hit with your pistol. But as far as our target here today, let's take a look. Uh, the Winchester Super X uh, did very good. Uh, one right off target, but this was before I adjusted the sights. Uh, it looks like you have probably an inch and a half group here. Uh, maybe slightly more, but not too much more. Maybe closer to two inches, but not, not you know, inch and a half to two inch. It's not a not a bad group. Uh, much better than the Remington. The Remington, it had a couple of flyers here. Uh, one, two, and three, four, five, six. So with these two, you're looking at a six inch group. So not <laughs> great. Um, although Remington has shot well out of a lot of my uh, lever actions, I guess this one is not, it's not doing well out of the single six. Uh, the Maxi Mag uh, CCI 40 grain. Uh, jacketed hollow point another decent group uh, also looks like it's uh, somewhere it's 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 bigger than the Winchester group but not significantly this one is definitely probably a two inch group uh, which takes us to the other CCI the uh, jacketed hollow point plus V 30 grain started to draw a smiley face here uh, one two three four five I only count five although I think that there is a double hit uh, when I check the video of my target video, I'll be able to see if that's the case. But even so, uh, you're looking at a two and a half inch group here. This smaller circle, if I remember correctly, is three inches. So yeah, that's that's a kind of a big group. But the other 30 grain here, the Winchester 30 grain, it, it liked it a lot. If it wasn't for this one flyer, this would have been the tightest group. You got four rounds there, one right next to it, and then this flyer. So if you take the flyer out, you're looking at a probably an inch group maybe just a little bit more but you can't ignore the flyer so this is one i'm definitely going to test out of this pistol a little more to see if that was just sort of uh an outlier or if i'm going to get consistent flyers if i get consistent flyers and i'm probably not going to use that ammo but if, if they start to tighten up and i don't get too many of those this may be the winner uh the norma also a decent group except for one flyer up here uh this little group here looks like it would have been you know about an inch and a half but then you get this one out here and you're you're, you're probably it's just over two inch group already so not as great as I would have liked. That being said, I guess the winners would be the Winchesters. You got the Winchester here uh, with, well, I mean, if you take that flyer out, uh, but this Winchester, the Super X, a 40 grain, definitely a decent group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up probably taking both of these ammunitions, firing more rounds of them through this pistol, see if uh, eventually one starts to tighten up or if it prefers one over the other. And then I can adjust the sights to make sure I'm hitting on target. But uh, as always, this was a, a fun video. I really enjoy single action shooting, something I've enjoyed since I was a kid and uh, will most likely enjoy throughout my days. And since ammo's back on the shelves, I, I encourage you all to do the same sort of stuff. If you have a pistol you like or a, or a rifle you like and you wanna get really, really accurate with it, well, the first step is to find ammunition that it likes and consistently hits well with. And then you can, you know, adjust your sights and, and get it to hit on target. And then you can Im impress your friends when you're out shooting. But anyway, you all, as always, thank you for, for joining me for this video. I hope you're staying safe buying some ammo, heading out to the range, and having some fun. See you all in the next video.